Adam Penn, supervising editor of American Horror Story. Uh, one of the most difficult things to do in any television series or film is to create suspense and to scare the audience. So how do you, through the editorial process, do that on something like American Horror Story? Um, a lot of that is uh, pacing, um, which kind of seems obvious, but uh, it, it really makes a big difference, um, especially with with anything really, but especially with horror. Um, the show American Horror Story has always been a pretty kind of fast paced show, um, but I'm I'm a big believer in kind of slow horror, mm -hmm. and uh, I feel like this past season with Horror Story we slowed it down a bit so that there was more of just this sort of brooding kind of uh, creepy feel and then when something happens you quicken it up speed it up so that the scares just hit you you know um, so that's sort of that's kind of where I go mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's the pacing and the sound really um, mm -hmm. well you've been with the show since the very beginning yes. so can you talk about how uh, you know some of your experiences in the beginning of coming up with this specific style and tone and how that's evolved over the years into what it became in Freak Show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting because, um, you know, each season's a, a different animal and it's sort of interesting to kind of take a step back and look at how the show's evolved over the over the seasons. Um, and specifically with, with the editing, uh, season one was very kind of jumpy, a lot of jump cuts, um, which, which was really cool. It added sort of a tension, a tense energy, a nervousness to it, which, which I liked. Um, and then I feel, I just feel gradually over the, over the four seasons, we kind of slowly sort of pumped the brakes a little bit and sort of slowed it down a little. Um, so it's sort of, I, I like how the experience, the horror experience has changed um, mm -hmm. over time. Um, mm -hmm. that's sort of the, that would be the main thing, um, just sort of the general pace has kind of slowed down some, um, which I think is is uh, really effective with, with horror. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, each, you know, this being an anthology series, each season has its own unique storyline. So is that uh, pace established somewhat by what the storyline is? Or, you know, is that just a general thing overall? Um, that's interesting. I, I, I a lot of it sort of comes from Ryan specifically, um, and each you know every season kind of has a different cinematic reference, touchstone, whatever. Uh, and this past season was uh, the, the the most obvious one was Todd Browning's Freaks, which is not in any way a sort of fast paced, crazy, jump cutty thing. Um, right. And then, and, and Ryan also referenced a little uh, uh, South Pacific. So it's just the, sort of the, the movies from the, from the 50s and earlier that we were kind of drawing from, um, the, the pacing is just naturally slower. And it just sort of, that's sort of where we started and then it just kind of evolves from there. Um, and then the actors bring their own pace to it, which dictates a lot of what, of what we do in the cutting room. Um, and, uh, and then obviously Ryan too dictates the pace as well. Um, but, but it all starts with the references for me. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to bring up uh, Freaks because that's the most obvious uh, sort of reference to what you were doing in this past season. Um, so, I mean, I guess you adapted a more uh, classical editorial approach to it, would you say? Yeah, definitely. I mean... It, and with such an amazing location, like it's just, I, I, I would just want to hold on these shots and, and drink it all in instead of, you know, going all chaotic and jumping around. Um, mm -hmm. So I feel like all the elements kind of lent itself to the, to the pace. Right. And with that, um, you know, that footage that you get, um, you know, has there ever been a moment um, where it was a challenge for you to create uh, the suspense or to create this scare um, because maybe something wasn't there that you needed and you had to, you know, jump through hoops as it were or, 
I mean, can you talk a bit about that? Uh, mostly it's, with, with this with this season in particular, it was really just kind of sticking to the, the slower pace and that mm -hmm. sometimes the, the footage didn't lend itself to it, so we would have to, or particularly uh, the, the first scene with, with Twisty the Clown when, when he enters, uh, enters the world. Um, it, it was shot beautifully, uh, sort of the Zodiac was our reference for that. Um, okay. and, uh, and it was shot with sort of a slower kind of stalkery pace in mind. And I, I was trying to get it even a little bit slower. So some shots we had to kind of slow down like an imperceptible amount or, um, do an, like an invisible split screen so that you know we, we have Twisty coming in and then just, just so the action would match. Um, we have Twisty and then we have uh, Bonnie, uh, the, the blonde girl, the first girl that he, that he abducts. Um, so it's just sort of, you know, we have to manipulate the footage a little bit to kind of balance it out and get, get that sort of slow, methodical, brooding kind of pace. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's it's sort of just making everything kind of balanced. That was that was sort of the biggest challenge, um, and and it's most obvious in Twisty because we we I, we wanted a really long you know walk up to the to the couple and you know having a picnic. Um, we wanted to sit with Twisty, hear his breathing, hear his walking, and you know just really kind of pace it out. And then when he attacks, then you just you know you hit him with quick cuts and and all of that um, but yeah it was just sort of managing all of that and and crafting it to a, a pace that I felt was appropriate um, that was kind of the biggest challenge and then uh, d dealing with the twins the uh, the that was also a big challenge with, with this season um, a fun one but a big challenge nonetheless uh, right because there's a lot of effects that go into that. Can you talk a bit more about that? Yeah, it's, um, yeah, everybody, everybody talks about the, the VFX with the twins, and, and they should, because it's great. Uh, but nobody talks about the editing side of it, which I'm, I'm glad I get a chance to do, because it, it was a real mind bender dealing with these, with these twins. Um, because essentially every, even if I wanted to cut to them for a reaction, every reaction shot is actually two reaction shots that actually have to interact with each other a little bit too. Um, so we really, we took, uh, we, we would do, they, they obviously shot the both heads separately and um, I would find whoever's, whether it's Dot or Bet, whoever was kind of more integral to the scene, I would, I would sort of favor them, pick their performance, reactions, whatever first, and then go back through and find the other twin and see, you know, find good looks. They would look at each other. And basically we had to do kind of an imperceptible split screen um, just to kind of get a taste of what it's going to be like because we couldn't have the full VFX done by the time Ryan would come in to screen a cut. So just to sort of give him a taste of how it's going to play, how they're going to react. Um, with each other, with whoever they're sharing the scene with, um, that was uh, that. That was sort of how we presented it first, and then we would send it out to VFX, and then they would make it look pretty, essentially. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, de dealing with dealing with a double-headed character is certainly something I've never had to do before, and probably will never have to do again. But I'm glad. I got <laughs> but you said a story. You never know. You never know what's yeah. going to <laughs> Um, so what does, um, you've worked with Ryan Murphy a few times. Uh, you also worked on Nip Tuck and on uh, The Normal Heart. Uh, so what does he give you as a collaborative partner uh, that helps you in the editorial process? What he does that's so great is he, he gives me, before a frame has been shot, he gives me an abundance of references. And... I love that. It's just, it's a shorthand for me. Um, it helps me with all aspects, the, 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 the pacing, the music, the sound design. Um, 
and uh, and it allows me to just sort of dive in and get just just immerse myself in in his headspace for for whatever project we're working on and it's thus far it's worked really well we've worked on vastly different things together and um, and that's always been kind of for, for me the best part of the process the most fun and just it's just a great shorthand. It, it really helps me get in his head. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. What is it that excites you about editing? Uh, you know, they say that, uh, you know, things are made in the editing room and that you and our sense and the, the, um, the last voice to be heard mm -hmm. on a project. Uh, you know, what is it that excites you about that? For, for me, uh, the, the single most exciting thing about editing is you, you literally see a piece come to life. Um, because before it, before it, the footage comes into my room, it's a bunch of raw dailies and, you know, with great performances, great shots, everything, but it's just a bunch of pieces. And, you know, you cut the dailies and that's always, you know, it's, it's, it's hard cutting dailies. Um, because you're not really sure what you have exactly, then you work in some sound, work in some music, and then at a certain point, it just starts to come alive, and you sort of realize what it is, what the tone is, what just what you're dealing with, and that's always really exciting for me to kind of just see something. There, there's just a moment. I don't know at what point. It, it's usually once there's some sound and music laid in, and um, you kind of have a handle on the performances, that it just kind of starts to pop, and. I, I love that because then I'm the first person that gets to see this thing in the world, and that's that's really exciting. Um, so yeah, it's just a lot of fun. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me, and uh, congratulations on your work. Thank you, thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. Thank you.